Howdy, Beef Lobart here, and welcome. All right, got something a little bit different. Um, gonna do something, as the title suggests, do a little bit of swimming with the fishies. First off, um, free. Free, 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 free. Um, first thing we're gonna go to is um, free for the month, Phoenix Anim Pack 3. So, you're gonna need to grab that. That's going to be used for this asset, or this uh, particular demonstration. I am also going to use, uh, stop looking at the shinies, um, my simple multiplayer steam template. So we're going to get this multiplayer replicated so you can actually swim and swim with your friends and go from there. Um, if you're not familiar with the simple multiplayer steam template, it is a standalone menu system only. Um, yes, I have way too many projects. I'm going to be deleting a lot of these very, very soon. So the SMST 423 is the one that I'm going to use for this video. And what I'm going to do to get this to actually work is I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to select clone. Make sure you're in the correct folder where you want to save your project. And I'm going to call this um, Pirates. And then I'm going to hit create and continue. It's going to go ahead and take a second and poof, there you go, it's created. And now just need to find it and it's right here so we'll go ahead and open up the project and it won't take very long to open up and we'll start adding some assets all right dismiss I have some other plugins that are in here that you probably won't have so next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down through the 8,000 friggin' asset that I have in here. I'm not complaining, by the way. Um, these are free, worth checking out. Um, Sci-fi weapons, can 3D people are okay. Um, prototype weapons is pretty good. Um, you've also got some other realistic type characters if you're into that kind of thing. Um, but always check the free section there's always cool things in here so we're going to add the project it's only 20 megabytes and it's the phoenix anim pack 3 and again that is free this month yes i haven't ignored everybody that's asking about doing the advanced locomotion system with cindy characters we'll be doing that soon might do that wednesday um pirates just like that add the project and won't take for just a moment and done okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to yeah I hate getting messages while I am streaming sorry you guys know I'm grumpy all the damn time uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I've got the pirates pack from Cindy Studios and that is in I got this directly from the store their store so, uh, got so many projects so we're going to go into the project here and I'm going to go into content, gotta love Windows 7, and this is where we're going to put the folder, okay? So, and so many updates, so many versions, you extract out the Pirates um, 414, and then you've got this folder right here. This is the one we're actually going to use is the Polygon Pirates. So we're going to take that and I'm just going to right click, drag and drop it into the content and copy here. And that should have us all set, ready to go. Now, um, Plague on Pirates. Love this map. Go ahead and get this loading because it's going to take a, a minute or so to get the, um, uh, the shaders compiled. So how the heck is everybody tonight? I've had a unusual day to say the least. I love this demonstration map. Um, the guys at Cinti do a really good job on their stuff. I really, really like it. I've got a, pretty much everything they've ever done. I've got so I highly recommend if if you're into this stylized type of character. Um, it's a lower poly and for me the weapons in it me being a, a gun snob um, I tend to overanalyze the weapons that are in games and I can get very very touchy whenever it comes to them being done wrong so let's get these 
shaders compiled and while we're waiting on that I'm gonna go ahead and just throw a player start into the map and just rotate it around a little bit and we need to go to our world settings and change our game mode over to third person game mode and I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a different map come on shaders <laughs> you can do it go to file save current as I'm gonna put this in my map folder and demo map so it's saving and the, the shaders are compiling got the water um, I love all the ships I love the scenery I love pretty much just about everything about this pack <laughs> it's really cool so we're almost done with our shaders and we're gonna have to just do a quick test here and we'll hit play and see we're walking what I want to do is create a system for whenever you go into the water you actually can start swimming but I want to look at the depth of the water that might be an issue if it gets too deep based on this simple method of swimming um, I'm not going to use a post process or a, a, um, a physics volume is what I'm actually looking for so I'm gonna do it a little bit differently and it's a scalable simple thing to do here um, so let's, again, let's save all and for now I'm gonna go back to a test map just so that I can get things working correctly and then I'll move everything to this map and then we'll get into actually doing the characters so let's go to a new level and VR basic and I'm gonna grab my balls I mean ball and cubes and pyramid delete that I'm going to create a folder called map shit ah, stuff <clears throat> yeah and I'm gonna grab all this stuff right here throw it in there and just because I'm weird I'm gonna grab these two and I'm just gonna throw them underground just so I don't have to look at them and our player start I am going to first off third person game mode change my player start to negative 1200 by negative 1200 and just want to get them right here so when we hit play we're up here and then I'll just quickly throw in a set of stairs just so we can get in and on the water and test that out um, go into the assets folder a bunch of materials here We're just gonna use this beautiful red color go to geometry linear stairs we need 28 stairs for this map we are going to rotate 180 and I'm gonna change the width to 300 just because and I'm just gonna go ahead and move it in place You know, the thing about these videos is I create them, and then I delete them, and then I, <laughs> hey, what's up, man? Then I do the video, and I have to redo everything that I've already done once before. So, now we have a way to get in and out of the water, and I'm not going to put, well, I guess I could put the, uh, the Cindy water in here. But let's go ahead and quickly do a retarget. Let's get our characters going. Uh, I'm going to go to my characters folder, and I'm going to create a new folder called mesh and I'm going to new folder and emissions and first thing I'm going to do is go to my polygon pirates meshes ah, pardon for the um, weird sound to my voice but some really crappy demo work has caused me some other issues I'm going to grab this mesh the skeletal mesh and I'm going to copy it into my mesh folder that I created and I'm going to rename that SK underscore polygon even though I'm not going to add any more assets to this I'm still going to go through this the same way I'm going to open this make sure it's at humanoid and that's good we don't have anything else in there we just want to make sure it's humanoid for now and then we're going to go back to people and I'm not going to do all of these because you've got English captain and 
English Captain Bear. So I'm just going to get the bear ones, which is the second of each one of these, because if we want to add our own components to them later, we want to add them instead of having them already on the character. And to be honest, I love this pack just because of the skeleton. And then, once I have those selected, you just right-click, go to Skeleton, Assign Skeleton, and select the SK Polygon. And you're going to have to do this for each one of the ones you have selected. But if you're going to be adding multiple of the Cindy Studios assets into your project, this is going to speed up your life greatly. Because you can use this one SK Polygon Skeleton for virtually every single solitary polygon character there is. The exceptions I think are going to be the modular character uh, pack and the um, adversaries because the, um, the the large characters, the, the ogres and that kind of stuff, they need a little bit of uh, tweaking. So we're going to go to that, we're going to save all and we're going to call this our test map. And then I'm going to hit save all one more time, just because I know it needs it. We're going to go to our mesh now. And we're going to go ahead and we have to apply the asset. But I'm going to go ahead and just use my favorite character, the skeleton. I just like this guy. And then we're going to hit save, close. Next thing we got to do is I'm going to create a temporary folder. Because we're retargeting an asset pack to from one skeleton to another to another. Yeah, well, most of the characters have fixed fingers. But, you know, other than the middle finger and the index finger and the thumb, you don't really need much else. I use my middle finger quite a bit, so... Um, I'm sorry, we're, we're talking about the characters or real life? Um, <laughs> so we're just going to call this temp. And this is just going to be a temporary placeholder for the animations. The next thing we got to do is go into our, our UE4 mannequin. We're going to have to do this in two stages. Go into our mesh and select humanoid rig. And this is our UE4 mannequin skeleton. And then we hit save. Then we're going to go to the Phoenix animation pack 3. Go to characters and mesh. And same thing. And we just need to select the select humanoid rig. If you don't have the retarget manager, all you have to do is just click on this and you'll get that tab. So we'll hit save, close that. Now we can take the animations, and I'm just going to do all of them because I like them all. And you notice how they have the word anim in front of each one of them? I don't like that, so we're going to fix that while we're doing this. So I'm going to right click. Well, there's a fix to that if they do but I haven't had that happen. So I'm going to right click and retarget, duplicate anim and retarget, select the UE4 mannequin skeleton since um, we can mouse over it and see the file path where it is. We know that it's the right one. Um, and we're not going to have the one that we're currently using, so we don't have to worry about that. And we're not doing the other ones just yet. We're not going to do this one at all. We're going to do this one after we get done with this part. So now, the next thing I want to do is go to Replace, and I'm going to type in the word Anim, because I don't want the word Anim in front of every freaking animation that's there, and I'm not going to replace it with anything. So I'm then going to hit Change, I'm going to go to my Temp folder, select OK, and we're all good to go, and Retarget. Now, they are done, and we are done with the Phoenix Anim Pack 3. So in theory now, we can actually take this and go to our root content folder and delete Phoenix Anim Pack 3. We have the animations out, we don't need the character, we don't need anything else, we're good. I'll tell you how many times I've done this and realized that I haven't retargeted them yet. And after importing all kinds of freaking animations and realize, oh crap, you didn't retarget them, you dummy. So you have to re-import them all over again. Sometimes it will not delete that folder. We're not going to worry about it. You can always go out and you close the project down, go into your file explorer and delete it that way manually, but I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to let it do its thing here really quickly and just delete that whole folder. All we needed were those animations. We put them in that temp folder and if we want we can take a peek at them really quickly. 
All right, temp folder. Let's do a save all. We're only going to be using swim idle and swim surface water. Looks lovely, doesn't it? Beautiful. So now let's do the retargeting to the Cinti characters, and, and that's that's not going to take very long either. Um, we can now go into our UE4 mannequin skeleton in the mannequin folder, and we're going to go into that. We already have humanoid selected, but to get him ready for the Cinti, we need to make this dude a T-pose, because everybody in the entire planet except for Epic uses a T-pose. They just decide they're going to use an A-pose. Um, so we're going to take the upper arm, rotate it up by 50. We're going to take the lower arm, rotate it down by 10, and back by 30. We're going to grab the hand, and we're going to bring it up by 20. Do the same thing on the other arm. Up by 50. Oh, it, it ought to be pretty cool. So we'll go down by 10 and back by 30, and then we'll do the hand up by 20. Then we're going to select Modify Pose and use Current Pose and Save. We're going to close this, hit Save All, and <sighs> we are ready. Now we can actually go in here and do the next part. Go to the Animations folder for our UE4 Mannequin Skeleton. And we have our third person anim BP. I'm going to hit F2, Control C, and then click off. I've just copied the whole name in there because I don't like that name. I'm going to right click on it. Oh, before we can do that, we got to go back and. No, we already did the. Um, I call it a Y pose, A pose, you know, it, I've heard it called different things. Somebody corrected me one time for calling it a Y pose. Um, but yeah, I mean, I. I'm old and grumpy and I just don't care anymore. <laughs> so we didn't need to make sure, we could use a plane going by, that we did set a uh, preview mesh for our, our actor here. No, that's good. Plus killing time waiting for that plane to fly over. I, I live near an airport. Um, actually, yesterday I think it was, three F-22 Raptors flew over and then a few minutes later, two F-18s flew over. Alright, so we're going to go right click on our third person animation blueprint and duplicate anim. We're going to select our SK polygon and in here and replace, I'm going to hit control V so I can put that whole third person anim BP in there. I'm going to replace that with polygon ABP. So I, I have my polygon animation blueprint. And I'm going to hit change and I'm going to put this in my character animations folder and OK. Then retarget. And we're going to hit Save All. We can now go into our Character Blueprint. Not saying Manny ain't sexy, but first up, select Mesh. Change this. We're going to go to our Skeleton. And since I use the FPS cam right there on, on the player's head, I don't know why I still do that, but we'll just rotate it by 90 back and towards us by 90. And let's go ahead and zero this out. And I'm just going to just pick it up to right there. It's not correct, but it's going to be correct enough for now. Compile and save. We're probably not even going to be using it. And then we can go ahead and click back on our mesh again and then change our anim class to polygon. Yay. And there was much rejoicing. So we can hit compost and save. While we're in here, we need two variables. There's going to be a whole lot of work we're going to have to do on our player character. Um, it's going to be extensive, so bear with me. Um, in water question mark and another variable called can jump question mark enter then we're going to come over here and do that because we're going to make one change to the jump I'm just going to move it over here so it's easy to work with all 
All right, let's hit compost and save so we got this. Um, this is going to be really, really complicated. So bear with me on this. Get a reference to can jump. And we need to make this true by default. And then we need to drag off from here and branch. Connect that. And okay that was a lot of work um, I mean that was a lot of work to do with um, the, the character blueprint I know it was it was a lot to keep up with but we're done with the player character we can actually close them down we don't need him we don't need you anymore save close so now we go in here we're a skeleton yay we can jump we can do our thing and everything is awesome so now let's go to the animation blueprint which we put in here and we need the swim animations so let's go to our temp folder and I'm gonna grab all those guys and I'm gonna retarget polygon I don't have to replace anything I do need to change the folder I know this is complicated but here we go and we're done um, save all. So let's go ahead and take a look at our swim idol. Looks good. All right. So let's go back to our animation blueprint. And here's where we make the magic happen. First off, I I hate how the default thing looks. So I'm going to get rid of their comment blocks. And I am going to take a second. You guys know that I have to do this. It's like required. It will bug me to know in how badly this freaking blueprint is laid out. You know, I I am not the greatest with um, blueprints. Yeah, and there was a whole lot we had to do with the character, wasn't it? I mean, that was just it was torture. Do that, and we'll do that, and now this this works, okay? So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and drag from this pin, and I'm going to get a reference to our player underscore base, which is my player character. And for the object reference, I'm just going to grab from try get pawn owner and plug it directly into here. Stupid simple. And then the next thing I'm going to do is, because I plan on doing more with this package later, playing with my package, this asset later, I'm going to do a sequence. So it will allow us to split things off and do more things later. And I am going to get in water. Let's get wet. Get in water. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable here, which is going to be called is in water question mark that's close but a little bit different and then what we're going to do is we're going to set it but let's go ahead and run a branch because as we know branch node is a way of asking questions is the player in water if it is true then do this Control C and Control V. If it's not, then we're going to do that. So all we're doing right now is we're just going to set this variable to true if we are in the water and false if we're not. I know it's complicated, but now let's go to the anim graph. And I'm not going to be using any montages, so I don't really need to do anything with that. Just go directly into here. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag off from the idle run, and we're going to add a state. Um, tread water. What we're going to do is tread water when we're at this state here. And we just need to swim idle. Grab that blueprint, plug it in here, and okay, we're done with that part. To get into, be able to use that animation, we need to go into, and just so you see what I did, I went to this little double 
ended arrow. We're going to grab is in water, plug it right in, and we're done with that part. We go back to default, and we want to be able to get back into our idle run. So our return, and this is going to be complicated now, okay? Get is in water, drag off from here, type in NOTB, NOTB, enter. So we are is in water, not. We're not in the water. All right. So what about when we're swimming, when we're actually doing our, our swimming animation? Well, let's just go ahead and drag off from tread water and add a new state. Swimming. Because we are going to be swimming. And we're going to want to transition back into that. So let's go into our swimming animation. And we're going to grab swim surface water plug that in okay that part's done complicated right now here's where the fun part comes in here is um <laughs> not to get into the be able to do the swimming animation what we need to do is just grab a reference from our speed get speed and then we drag off from there, type in float, because I'm dyslexic and I can't remember crap. If our speed is greater than, and let's just set it to 50. It's not very fast, actually, since our normal movement speed is like 300 or 600. So if we're moving more than 50, we can start doing the swimming animation. And then to get out of swimming to go back into treading water, we're going to do the same thing, except... Once we get our speed reference, we're going to drag off from here. And if our speed is less than 50, then we go back into the idle animation or do treading water animation. So that's it. That's all we need for this animation blueprint. Now we need some way of making it actually work. So I'm going to go to my assets folder and I'm going to create a new folder called blueprints. Because I like to be somewhat organized sometimes. <clears throat> I know there's one person that's watching this video right now that has seen my office and knows that it's definitely not freaking true. <laughs> hey, Eagle, you want to sit in that chair again? My old office chair is a death device. You have to balance perfectly, and I know that he, he likes to nod off from time to time. So he's having to maintain perfect balance so the chair doesn't dip over and <laughs> try to knock him over. I'm sorry, bro. I love you, but that was funny as shit. <laughs> Watching you try not to fall out of my, my death trap chair. When there was another chair like 20 feet away. Anyway, so let's uh, <laughs> create a blueprint. And it's going to be an actor. And there's going to be water. Um, volume. Lack of a better term. So we go in here. I am going to add a component. And it's going to be a box collision. And I'm going to call this my water zone. Because it's cool, right? And I'm going to raise it up by 30 on the Z because it likes to be below ground for some reason. Alright. This is where the fun begins. Delete you. It's not really that difficult. I mean, this is what I was like. Damn, I hope I could do more with this video other than just do the swimming. We'd already be done with the regular part if, if I didn't add any other asset. So on component begin overlap. And right click on component end overlap. We're going to drag off from other actor and get a reference to our player character. Of course, mine's called player underscore base. And the same thing how. You get over there. There you go. So, um, first thing we got to do here is set in water to be true. But I'm going to go ahead and just grab that Control C and Control V so that we can put it in the bottom one. And it's going to be true here. It's going to be false there. Plug that in. Now, technically, that's all it really needs but we're gonna have to do one little hotfix on it so that it works even better 
I'm going to go ahead and put this at 0, 0, and I'm going to scale this out by, and uh, 22 is not big enough, um, 3 by 33, now it's not going to be perfect, we're going to have to change the location of it, but as you can see, as soon as I dipped into the water, he started doing the, uh, the animations, so as we're, we're swimming around, we stop, goes back to tread water, we move around, and we're good. But the problem is, is then whenever I come out of the water, he doesn't stop until I stop, and then he goes back into walking. So what we need to do is trick it to get it to not do that anymore. And all we got to do is drag off from on our end overlap and set movement mode. And we're just going to make him freeze for just a minute. So it automatically defaults to none, which is fine. And then we just want to run a delay. And I'm going to change this to be even shorter than the point 0.2. We're just going to go point 0.1. We just want that little quick delay action here. And... We are going to we never set our movement mode because there is a swimming and flying and falling and all kind of stuff in here but we're just going to go back to walking so basically all we're doing is whenever we exit the water we're freezing our character we're stopping him from moving for just that one tenth of a second and then we can resume walking again so we go in here, Bloop. we're in the water, custom sound effects there by the way, and when you come out of the water, see it forces your character to stop, and then you're back to walking normal again. It's almost not noticeable, and you don't have any transitions between get up and start walking. You don't really need it because it, it kind of pops pretty quickly. So that's it. That's getting our character to swim, our Cinti Studios characters to be able to swim. Tread water. So as long as our movement is more than 50, we go into that animation. And as soon as we pop out of the water, we just go right on. Now, that's where the problem comes in, is we jump, and that's why we added that other thing in there. So let's go back to our player character. And in our jump here, can jump, um, we need to go back, I'm sorry, into our blueprint for our water, not our player character. And we need to set can jump. We want it to be false whenever we're in it. And then when we get out of it, we want to set it back to true again. So now we can't jump while we're in the water because it just looks doofy. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did I forget to connect that pin from our character to there? So now we run over here, jump in the water, and we can no longer jump. You hit that space bar all you want to, can't jump. So if we get out the water, we can jump again. I told you guys it was easy. And so how will this translate to... Let's go ahead and save this. And I'm going to just close up some folders. I'm going to leave the asset folder open because I'm going to need my, my water here in just a minute. Go into our demo map. And it's going to be a really big volume. So, unfortunately, it's not going to be that horrible, but we are going to have to place it first and get it approximately in the right location for our height, our height wise. So, I'm just going to go ahead and 50 by 50. We're going to have to go a lot higher than that, but we'll walk over here with our character. I believe it was right in here. Or was it? Where was it? 
Nope, wrong side of the arm. My bad. Yeehaw. I'm famished. I'm just. Anybody got a sandwich? It's killing me there's no sound on this map. Absolutely killing me. You know that, right? So it was. Alright, where the hell did I put the damn thing? You know, let's just go ahead and size it up for the map. We'll raise and lower as we need to. Where did my player start? Love you guys, Cinti. But, um, you know, it's right there. You guys suck at not putting things in, in folders. Alright, so just so we can get a quick test. I want to make sure that it's there and we can go ahead and make it bigger too big in fact but we just want to make sure we're getting into our animation transition all right so we're going to sink to the bottom so what we can do is actually put a blocking volume in so that um, we don't fall below that level and that we stay here so now we come out of the water and yeah a little too high oh close up all these damn things water volume all right so having it smaller we can actually see a little bit So it just takes some playing with just to kind of get the the right height so that it's right that way and then just kind of scale it up to fit the, the entire map and then yeah, still too high guess my ass go back down to there um, yes I know I can right click on the map and hit and play from here but it's a short walk Not bad. See, we're we're gonna drop below our water volume. But to fix that I can actually go ahead and just put a blocking volume into the map and that will actually stop it from actually letting the player go too low. And good god, how big are we gonna have to scale this? Wow, 500 by 500 wasn't enough. Holy crap. Um, a thousand by a thousand's not covering the entire map. Damn. Well, that's too big, but I ain't care. It works. And then, um,. Let's hit F to zoom into it. Well, if you, like I said, if you want, to make sure that you're you're correct. I mean, you can do it by. Well, let's, let's just go ahead and make that 10x, and then we'll just make it the water deeper. And let it be deeper. We just need to lower it down. We just need to make sure that we don't drop below the lowest point. So. There is an underwater swim as well. You know, I could probably use math and, and figure this out. Um, it's 900. I think we probably need to be at, at negative 1,000. But... So, Joy, whenever you're working on maps, you need to... Oh, that's not bad, actually play around with things. Um, we'll have to look at... Oh shit, we're still too... Thing. Um, there's also the... 
back to this. We can actually raise the floor up. Raise the floor up to probably negative a thousand. We just want to make sure that there is no spots where our player can actually unswim if we drop too low. Um, like I said, you could put a blocking volume in to keep you from getting too deep in the water. We're a skeleton, we don't need to breathe. Um, you could change the um, thing so you can actually change your your pitch in the water. You do a certain thing, make you dive deep into the water. So now we come out of the water, we stop swimming, and we start walking again. I think that's pretty cool. Alright, so as an encore for this, since we are swimming, um, and I'm not going to do it on this map, I'll do it on the uh, the test tank. Awesome. We'll hit save all, save selected. Go to our test map. So we know that this works. But what about multiplayer replication? Do I need to worry about replicating anything? Um, I'm just going to grab the server and throw it off the map. Um, client yeehaw, is swimming automatically. Server jumps in. And replicates just fine. All right. No special awesomeness needed for multiplayer replication and all that kind of stuff. Um, encore. Meshes. Characters. Creatures. Shark and fish. We could take the fish, turn them into piranhas, make them attack us, and we also have the shark. Um, we can actually create a shark that swims around and just roams within the... Um, the nav mesh bounds and yeah awesome because it came with a basic freaking animation which is pretty cool and we're just going to hit apply an asset that's all we really need I mean honestly it would be nice if we had one of them opening his jaws and we could actually make our own animation for that um it's probably going to suck, but if you guys want me to, I can show how to, to basically do that. And we got our fish animation. Hit apply to asset and save. So, down and dirty, quick. Um, we'll go in here and we'll create a new folder NPC. going to cheat and we can take our player and left click drag and drop into our NPC folder copy here hit F2 shark underscore BP go into it zoom out get all this stuff delete follow camera delete camera boom delete FPS camera delete unless you wanted your your character would actually be a shark. Um, change it to shark and yeah I know this isn't the best way of doing it but you know what this is gonna be quick and dirty for an encore. Instead of animation blueprint all we need is use animation asset and our shark anim. Now we can just take our shark, throw them in here, and if we hit play, we look, we have a shark in the water. If we wanted to move around and chase us, not too difficult. We can actually go in here and add a component of pond sensing, compost, and save. And we're going to change the view angle to... 60. So we can kind of hide from them a little bit. And then we can actually get rid of that, that, 
we're going to leave the health because we might want to come back and kill a shark later. So with nothing in our blueprint whatsoever, we can zoom in and right click on pond sensing on sea pond and one thing we do need is a nav mesh bounds so let's go to our volumes nav mesh bounds and we're going to drop that at zero 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 and oh, that's way too big um Fine. We hit P. We see the green. That lets us know that we have an area where the shark can move. So we're good. Um, go back in here, and let's add in one variable: is moving, is swimming, is farting, whatever we want it to be. Um, but we need that variable. We'll come back to the on sea pond. And just a oh, we can leave. We can just go ahead and do this. Let's get it out of the way. And we'll do player underscore base, or we could do character or anything basically that he sees. He'll go after. Um, we need to AI move. And I do this backwards, and I'm going to probably get it wrong and have to come back and and redo it. Um, dyslexia takes over, and I, I usually screw this part up. Um, I want it to move to... Um, this is not the one that I want. I know this is going to be the wrong one. So if we jump in the water, swim around. Yeah, he didn't see us. All right. So um, there's two of the AI move twos, and I said I always get the wrong one. AI move two, and get a reference to self. Target actor. change that to that and we didn't actually get the shark swimming first ah, get away from me get away from me oh shit you're biting my ass hello quit um, ah. <laughs> I've changed the oh, come back here oh go away it doesn't do anything to us but so there's not inside of us that's why we do the um Acceptable radius. Let's do it at 150. And next we'll just get him to swim randomly. So he's just kind of rolling around, chilling. And see, he'll stop. Instead of being inside of us, he'll stop a few inches away from us. You can change that acceptable radius to be a little bit closer if you want. Um, let's get the nav, nav mesh bounds and lower it down a little bit more that's good so now let's go ahead and get our shark just roaming around doing its thing we can actually increase or decrease the speed of our shark um, so that he can't chew on our ass as fast go to our character movement and max walk speed set it to 500 And then let's go ahead and just do some random movement. Um, and I hate to do it, but um, let's run an event tick. I will see if there's another way of doing this, but um, we're going to use this AI move too again. Um, so let's do a, a branch node. Get is moving. So if we are moving, we don't want to do anything. But if we're not moving, we want to AI move to. We're not going to use um, 
Well, we use a reference to self just because our destination. So we need to go ahead and get our current destination or location and get world location. I don't know if I need this or not. Now I'm getting old. I can't remember shit. Set that to 100. Um, I believe I do need that because we're going to bring from here to our destination random point in a navigatable radius because it asks for our origin and we want to set this to about 5,000 so he'll swim around and go within a 5,000 radius of where he was to where his new location is going to be um, while he is doing that we're going to set his moving to true but what is he going to do when he gets there on success um, let's go ahead and just because I'm going to finish this out and get it at the one hour mark on success and on fail we want to run a delay and we're going to make it even more. Let's use a random float in range. And he's going to stand. Actually, no. Sharks don't stay still. So, never mind. We don't want a damn delay. So, we'll just do this. Sorry. If it was a player or a person walking around, yeah, you could um, uh, have it to where you know they stop for two or three seconds and then start going again but in this case since it's a shark and we're just going to copy this and use this as a fish as well and pretend it's a, a piranha but so on success we're setting is moving default because what happens here is on the event tick it's asking are we moving if the answer is no then get your ass in gear start moving and it sets is moving to true but when we complete our movement or we fail our movement we're setting it back to false and we can start swimming again so in theory now if we look down our shark is just going to be swimming randomly he can't get to us he's going to freak out if he looks over and, and we're in his sight radius and he can't get to us so he's going to just keep on going but if I jump in the water and start swimming come on do you see me still um, it's going to break because we have this. So we're just going to do this and this. So while he's tracking us, we're setting is moving to true. But then whenever he stops being able to track us, he'll be able to start going back to us swimming again. So, Shark is just randomly chilling, doing his thing. Get in the water. He's going to try to chase us down. We can just, unlike in real life, we can just outrun him. But he's going to stay right on our ass. And He couldn't do anything when he got to us, so he just went back to swimming again. Yeah, let's be good. I mean, get them deep enough in a river. Of course, you probably won't have sharks in a river, and unless it's Florida. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can't get me. So, since we we have got this working perfectly for the shark, I'm just going to close the shark down. I'm going to right click on him and duplicate, and call this fish, and go into it and shits and grins. We're going to change the fish down to 40 on the pond sensing. It's going to narrow down the um, the cone in which they can see him, our player. And we just go to our mesh, change it to fish, change the animation to fish, and let's hit P, get rid of that. So fish into the scene. 
and our fish automatically works. And we didn't add a water volume in here. You got fish chasing us. So if we want to get rid of the shark, we could actually um, buy Mr. Shark. And what happens if we put Control C, Control V? Let's put a couple fish in here. I can just put five in here. They all just randomly get their own separate spawn points. They do their thing, but as soon as we get in the water, yeah, yeah, you're coming after me. But since we didn't tell them to do anything when they get to us, they just, okay, we're done, and they keep on moving. So wherever your nav mesh balance is located in your map is where your fish are going to swim. And this is a cheap and easy way of doing it. I mean, so they're going to swim over to us and then just go away because we didn't give them the attack. We didn't tell them to take a bite out of our ass. We don't have any meat left on our bones anyway, so... Really nothing for them to eat. Unless they were dogfish trying to chew on a bone. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry for that one. Um... Good environments. Since we're here, we might as well put some water in. Uh, do, 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 do. Water. I know it's way too big for this little demo map here, but I don't know how deep it needs to be. Not bad. All right. If you look underwater and see the fish swimming around, we can put the shark back in if we want to. But nice little transition going in and out of the water. We stop. We automatically do our tread water move. We start doing our swim animation. Fish are still jumping out of the water for some reason. I have to lower the. Uh, the nav mesh a little bit more on them. The thing about the nav mesh balance is you can actually put multiple into your map. So if you have a lake, you can put one large one to cover your lake. And as long as there's nothing blocking them like terrain or anything, they can swim just fine. But what if you have a river that's leading up to your lake? You can actually put another one in there and they will overlap and allow you to actually um, join two together seamlessly. that fish are jumping out of water. That's awesome. I love it. So if we actually went back to our, our big map and actually put a bunch of sharks in there, we'd be able to do that. Um, go back to our map. Let's go ahead and save this one. And the demonstration map. Since we don't have a nav mesh bound in here already, um, we won't be able to actually put the sharks and let them swim just yet. Yeehaw. Well, I like it. I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I think it's awesome. And since, you know, the way that we, we did the, the characters in the beginning, we go back to our player character. We can actually change our character. Even though I love Mr. Skeleton, um, he's awesome. And he has friends, you know, like with armor on. Um, even more... We didn't retarget those. I, I should have, but... Um, no, first mate. Did we forget the first mate? Oh, oh um, we have to go back to our, our animation class. But, yeah, we can change to any of the other characters we want to. I do prefer the skeleton. He just looks awesome. And we didn't have to do anything funky to get it to work with replication. It just works. Um, didn't have to do any multiplayer replication to get it to work for multiplayer. Do, 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 do. Yes, it does kill me again. There is no audio in the map whatsoever. Bleep. 
I will look out for an update on this. Can't jump. Oh no, the train's too steep for me to swim on. Um, I, I will look at um, being able to swim below the water and above water or on, on the surface and that kind of stuff to get it to where it's a little bit more seamless where if you go underwater it'll do a different animation. Um, but yeah, it's awesome. If we go to our volumes, our nav mesh bounds. I'm going to go over to the beach again. And throw a nav mesh bounds in here. And where the hell did it go? Why the hell did you go up in the damn air? Stupid ass thing. It is not where I told you to go. It's a little bit easier to set up a nav mesh bounds because you actually have a physical thing to look at. So we can actually say do I don't know how big that is. When we hit P, we'll see. Um Now the thing here is with this, it's going to take forever to build your navigation for a larger map like this. You probably wouldn't want to do a huge one like this. It will probably be not nice to your map. So I would actually just select an area where you would like. Let's see if these back. Yeah, I'm actually going to delete this now, mesh bounds. That's just way too much. Um, if you try to use a large one like that, it's just going to be... Every time you move anything, it's got to rebuild navigation. To move something else, rebuild navigation. Even if it's not in the navigation stream, um, you're going to have to rebuild navigation. Okay, the, the two options for not letting your player swim too deep and worrying about having to do a breath system. Okay, well, he's been in the water for too long. He's going to dive because he, he can't breathe. And he can't surface because we didn't set that into the player yet. Um, so as long as he's on the surface, he's okay. But if he stays underwater for too long, we want him to drown. But we'll do that later. Like I say, if you want to have a limited area for a nav mesh bounds, like you could do the, this little cove here and put your fish in. Um, a section out here in a deep water where it's at its deepest, you can throw your sharks in there and give them a limited area to roam around on. Um, that's what I would do. Um, and let's actually right click, play from here, so we're actually on the boat. Um, another thing you can do is, and I have done with this pack as well, is set it up to where the cannons can actually um, convert this uh, player PC input to touch input. Um, Gamepad, VR, mouse input, movement input, uh, touch input, you mean like that right there? It's in here by default, the, the, the input touch. Is that what you're talking about there? Because technically speaking, um, if you don't modify the third person character too much, the touch input is already in here for um, that, but if it's not, um, you see you've got this touch element here um, for your inputs. Say if you did um, keyboard three or whatever, you know, instead of it being a keyboard input, your input key, you can actually come back in here and you've got selections for gamepad, keyboard, mouse, motion, touch, gesture, um, PS4, Steam, Xbox One, Android. So if you want, you can come into Android. You have controls there, like for your back button, your volume up, volume down, menu. Um, for touch, you have touch 1 through 10 you can use. And just by changing it there, um, it's input key, touch 1. I, I don't, I really haven't done much in, in the way of, of these. This is actually bound. Uh, 
damn you this is an unbound okay if you did input action that's oh, our what input touch input touch begin input touch yeah right there touch input touch this is actually a bound one hey how's it going man the input touch is going to refer to project settings I never use this input I never use these but you have right here mobile always show touch interface you can check that to be on so it shows up show console on four finger tap enable gesture recognition you've got some defaults you can enable here um, but you also have your action mapping jump and reset VR you can see it's space gamepad you can set up all your, your stuff in here footsteps yeah Gonna show that earlier, um, but that's that's also kind of easy. There's a couple different ways of doing it. Um, let's save this and go to a regular mount. So uh, when you're doing it, doing like footstep sounds, particle effects of dust kicking up. Hey, thanks for the sub. Um, it's not really that difficult um, you go to your animation and we got a bunch of different animations here for this one um, third person run I think is the one we got and walk so we'll look at third person walk as an example here and really all you're, you're gonna have to do here is pause it and see in your first step bring your foot around and your foot bam touches the ground and there's a couple different ways the easiest way to do it is just saying okay we're gonna make a sound yeah I never use default inputs I always do like I showed here Well, what if you're not using animations? If you're using a, a first person, you now that's a whole different ball game. Um, you can just trigger it off of uh, character movement. Um, I would assume that with character movement, uh, I'll have to look into with that. But you would have to set up a trigger to where, um, whenever you, even in first person, you're going to have movement and movement input and so forth and um, turn right you're gonna have to have something to, that whenever you are pressing the button to move forward um, again this kinda goes back to the control thing so keyboard W for for walk or whatever you're using for your walk key um, you can as simply as do a delay and um, we'll just do it at one second delay. You, you'll have to mess with your own timing on it. And then play sound at location. If it's single player, you don't need to worry about a location. If it's multiplayer, you're going to want to do that. Get world location. But if you're using a first person character, you're not going to have that anyway. So you're not going to have to deal with sound attenuations for this at least um, the sound I only have one sound in here and that's click um, well when you're doing that, that that's something totally different um, you're, you cast your third person character um, when you, you're doing the Oh, yeah, I always recommend UE4 over Unity because the, the workflow is like this. Okay, when I press the W key, I want to run delay, I want to play a sound, and then 
you're you're gonna have to run a every time you press it um, to do it you could actually run a delay here off of release but I would just sit here and do this and there was um there was a node that was uh, for um damn it is mouse button down um keyboard w I've never actually done this this way before because if you're using a um, first person character you're not going to have the the input of doing it with what well, you, you 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 technically can but you don't really have a walk animation So it was mouse button down. I don't know if this is going to work or not. I like said, um, nah. I'll have to, to visit that later. Just remind me on my Discord channel, and I'll take a look at it. Because um, normally with footsteps, you actually have physical footsteps with a third-person character. But when you're in a first-person character, and you don't have a third-person body, that's the, um, the idea of, you, of actually putting a body in there if you want to, but if you don't have it, then um, you're kind of screwed in one way. But there is there's going to be a way of doing it. Yeah, there there was an asset that's in the marketplace that's specifically for that. Uh, John Galt did a really good setup like that once um, a while back for footsteps based on okay, I'm on grass or I'm on wood or I'm on metal. He did a really good job on that. Um, but for third person animations it's no problem you just use an event notify um, yeah. technically speaking um, you can create an entire game from start to finish all blueprints just because it's just a matter of okay whenever I you think about shooting in general we don't have an animation set up for shooting we don't have a um, well it's just a matter of taste on, on, on what you really like but I, for me the, the workflow of blueprints is easier um, I don't have animation set up for shooting or anything else like that so that's just not gonna work I, I'm not gonna go through all that because I got other series on shooting stuff and I'll do that with this project eventually but we could do like left mouse button and when we press that left mouse button we want to play a sound or perform an animation or do something if you're you're setting up a, um, a shooter you want to do a lot of the, the shooting mechanisms from the actual weapon blueprint itself and not inside the character so for right now when I press the left mouse button I just want to play a sound so now Every time I press that left mouse button, it plays that sound. Or if I hit my spacebar, I, I do a jump. But I can't keep jumping until I'm actually on the ground. Um, yeah, I mean, you can do AI behavior. I mean, how I did AI behavior a while ago, a basic AI behavior system for the uh, the sharks. And the other fish. Um, test map. So yes, I know my water volume is way too big here, but I could actually take that water. Do, 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 where the hell is my water? Um, you close. Go to hell. And shrink it down 0. 0.5 by 0. 0.5. But the more you shrink this one down, the worse it gets. So really wouldn't suggest doing it. Try zero zero point one five, but a really simple 
yeah, that looks terrible. Um, let's actually get rid of the water completely, just so we can see what the fishy are doing. Um, so you see, I just put the fish in here, and a nav mesh balance inside the map, and then we hit play, and we can see the fish. They're just kind of each doing their own thing. They see me, but they can't get to me, so they'll they'll stop and they'll just keep on going. But if I jump on the water, once they see me, oh shit, they're gonna come after me. Yeah, they have very limited range um, on their their visibility. I can increase or decrease that. Um, same thing with the shark. I can throw the shark in here. Just grab him, throw him in the map, and he's just gonna do his thing until he sees me. And ha, I'm gonna eat your ass. No, no, leave me alone, you bastard. Go the hell away. No, oh, shit, fish too. No, go away. There. So, now that I'm out of the water, he's like, well, screw you then. He goes back to doing his thing. And honestly speaking, spent about 45 minutes from start to finish to take the normal UE4 mannequin skeleton, bring him into the map, get him, you know, doing his thing, and then um, bringing in and retargeting the animations from the free asset packs in the marketplace right now, um, free this month, the, the Phoenix Anim Pack 3. And then converting that over to work with our U4, UE4 Mannequin Skeleton, or Manny. And then converting the Cindy Studios asset pack to where we can now use any of the characters in there. And said, so if I want to change my character again, go back into player base, viewports, we can see what we're doing. Um, we could be Blackbeard. I try to show a lot of the stuff that's actually free. Uh -huh, you can't eat me. I have a hook. I'll pull your ass out of the water. Um, yeah, I could have done an attack, you know, whenever he, um... Eh, ignore that. That's an automatic filter. I don't care about foul language. I'm a grown-ass man. So, um... Yeah, just, I, I find the simplicity. It's easy to work with on a lot of the stuff. Um... What if I want to be pretty? Go for a swim. Yeehaw! Splish! I could import any of the other frickin' um, asset packs from Sydney Studios and get the same thing. You can never have too many frickin' animations. No, I appreciate it, man. Um, make sure you get a change. I like the skeleton. Let's be the winch. Actually, we need to be winch bear, because I didn't retarget those. Um, yeah, we're way past the, uh, the, the usual cutoff time for doing these, but if you're trying to look up her skirt now, you perverts. I already tried, and you don't see anything. Um, <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I know advanced locomotion. I'm, I'm told you already actually have the. Um, we'll save that for Wednesday. How about that? I've already got a project set up, ready to go. Um, just start working with it. Yeehaw! You ain't finding no catfish in here. Get away from me. <laughs> Thanks for the sub. So this is just more just BSing at the end here. Even though this was specifically about doing the swimming stuff, I don't mind answering questions. Yeah, see, all I do is, is uh, blueprint base. So, like I said, I'll, I'll take a look at and we'll mess with the... Um, Let's go back to my skeleton. I like my skeleton. Alright, so... 
And next thing we'll do is we'll make it to where we can ride the shark around. That'd be even cooler, right? No, I'm not going to do that. But um, if you guys are interested in, in the pirates, then as a theme thing, then I'll switch from the bank heist to this because the, the shooting mechanisms are, are going to be the same. The only difference is yeah, the weapons in this are going to be a little bit different. Um, your weapons are going to be musket based and swords. Yeah, bunch of pistols and a rifle and a shotgun. So, mm, yeah, you got a blunderbuss of two different types, but. You know, you got fishing pole. I've already done a, um, a brief demo on doing fishing, picking up a fishing pole, being able to fish, and then throwing a fishing pole down that actually had gravity and it sinks in the water. Um, you guys had asked me, was well, somebody asked me about doing a ladder demo? And I've tried two different methods of doing ladders, and I don't like either one. Um, the simplest being the, um, I love the ships in here too. Um, the simplest being just doing a teleport system and being done with it. Uh, another method was actually using basic flying. Um, I didn't like that. Um, I prefer something with animations where you actually see the, uh, the animations. Oh, okay, it's a little bit too big for uh, this map here, but, um, you got... The basic ships you can actually lay them out yourself. Long boats. And there's also a way you can actually set up these boats to where you can actually block the uh, the water from going inside. I don't remember how to do that, but um, yeah, I got all but um, the last one. Uh, and I've got to update another one. Guys at Cinti have not been responding to my emails or my my DMs. Yeah, the actual best one that I've seen for um, locomotion-wise is... Um, I don't think I have a project with it anymore. Um, like I said, I do have a project with the advanced locomotion in it, and so we'll take a look at that on, on Wednesday. Probably be at the normal nine o'clock time. Um, it's a battle royale template. Nobody else responded back about the battle royale stuff. So, uh, custom movement. This was actually free for the month a while back, and. I got it while it was free for the month, but I do recommend if you're interested in that kind of thing, this was actually pretty cool. Um, but it's a create project deal instead of add to project. Um, it's just called Custom Movement by Ju Sik Lee. Uh, and essentially you can put down these little green dots. You can actually make them invisible if you want to in your map so you don't actually see the model. But each one of them, like the small ones like this, it, they do a close handhold, and the character has all the animations and everything else for climbing up and down. Um, you have the top, um, the entry point. Um, it knows for being able to go from this one to this one to this one to this one. Or uh, you can see on the top up there, um, you can actually shimmy around the side. See that weird pattern in the background back there? You go from point to point to point and it takes a little bit of getting used to at first but it actually works pretty good um, you can be hanging from underneath yeah you can you can hide these assets um, all you got to do is just um, whenever you're um, well we just go to the player characters working model here um, when you select something like the mesh, you can actually, um, hidden in game, just click on that and it will be hidden. Um, so whenever you're, you're creating it, you actually can take whatever the mesh is for the item you don't want to see and just select hidden in game. 
you'll see it in the editor but you won't see it actually in the actual game itself um, so that one is actually really good I don't know how much it costs now like I said it was free for the month um, months ago but it's really intensive on the player character in other words, there's a lot of stuff in his player character and his or her. I don't, I'm not judging. Uh, so you kind of have to use that player character and just modify the rest of the actions you want to use. Like, okay, now I want to pull a gun out and use a gun. Or a knife or a bow or a throwing knife or whatever. So you actually have to use their system. And as you, you can see on the, um, the image, when you're setting up ladders... Um, or your handhold pieces. There's a lot involved in actually taking a look at it. But again, it's it's worth taking a look at it if that's your your deal of what you're looking for. Um, if you want something that's do it yourself, then I'll have to spend more time on it. I spent a couple hours today back and forth on a couple different methods and I didn't like it. But for sure, um like I said, I've already got a project created for the advanced locomotive. Um, I will actually take a look at it and see what it's going to take to retarget the Cindy Studios characters to that. Anytime I'm actually trying to put anything together... Actually, let's open up this one right here. Let's actually close the pirate one. I need to go start doing some cooking here in a little bit. Prepare some food for tomorrow. Alright, so... Um, ladder, like I said, I was testing out a couple different things, and I don't like any of what I've seen so far, uh, where you can actually teleport to get to the top, and then whenever you're up top, you can actually teleport and get back down. Um, it works. Uh, the other method that I was doing was as soon as you walk over to it, you keep pressing the, uh, the forward key, and your character just flies straight up. And if, you, and if you back off of it, it goes back to, you know, you fall down, you keep walking again. But just for a quick, how do you do and get up there, um, it works. And that's the thing about, um, with this, with blueprints, you don't need any coding experience whatsoever. I'm actually going to... Only got one player start on this one, so... Yep, um, not to really, you see your player is now up there, and if player turns around, do they, they sweep teleport right back down, and there you go. Um, the easiest way to do it is just, just run a teleport system, and... Oh, there's a lot of free resources and utilities for UE4. Essentially, all I have in the ladder is I have a ladder. I have an entry point, an exit, you know, which is the um, the box collision here, box collision up top. And then I have um, uh, a scene component for the top and the bottom spawn locations. And essentially, you're, you're running a custom event in the player character but you're setting the top location and the bottom location based on where you're at and so forth. It was a relatively simple thing. I was going to do that tonight, but I really wanted to do the fishing. So get ready to get out of hall. Go to learn. Let's actually close that down. Click on the learn tab on the launcher. And you can actually go to pretty much any of these where you see like content example and you see the cloud that means that there's a project there's stuff you can actually download to go along with that um, chaos destruction demo pixel streaming archviz um, composure framework sequencer that's a cool video to watch that video is actually pretty cool um, Really didn't find much use in the virtual studio thing yet. Um, 
matinee, landscape, sun temple. These actually come with stuff you see in there. Um, blueprints. This one here is kind of in-depth. It's kind of overwhelming, the kind of things you see in there. But turn-based strategy. You realize how easy it is to convert Cindy Studios assets over to that. Uh, multiplayer shootout. Mm, it works. Um, uh, I don't like the multiplayer setup in, this, in there, but... Eh. Stick figure 2D. Blue, blueprint spline track. Not bad. Inventory with UMG. Not a bad one there to, to work with. And guess what? It has content. You click on that. And you can actually go into it. I'll come back up to that one. Action RPG. I started doing that one and converting Cinti Studios characters into that. Um, and got pretty far with it as well. I try to... to, to teach things in a way that I hope people can grab a hold of. If you really want to get crazy and spend a lot of time, you can actually go right here, Shooter Game, okay, and click on the cloud and go into it. It's hard, it's going to be a little slow because I'm streaming at the moment, but, and I have crappy internet. As soon as you go there, Create Project is there. It worked from 4.0 all the way to 4.24. So whatever engine version you have currently, optimized for Xbox One and PlayStation 4, demonstrated on the Linux. Now, keep in mind, licensed for use only with Unreal Engine-based products. However, you can take this project right here, and you can add to project, ignore... You gotta love these comments. I don't know about this, but I want to make a battle royale game that's FPS. Any tips? Not here, you frickin' moron. It's not a place to ask for tips. I wish that whenever you press the down arrow to give a negative, it would punch them in their gonads so they would understand this is not how you do it. Um, now, there is a lot of C++ backbone to this. But there are things that you can do with this one, actually with blueprints as well. Um, you can create a project, and once you create that project, um, I don't know if I have it or not. I may have deleted it. Oh, right here. So you actually can go into the project and and edit it and work on it from that. This project is actually a working shooter game, first-person, third-person shooter, that I think because I'm old and crap, the bots are a little bit... He has bots, too. So, And I think the bots are a little bit better than I am. <clears throat> it's not that I suck and that I'm old and crap or anything, but, you know. Um, but it actually... Think about this. Shooter game. This template right here. That's free for you to, to download and use in your project. To make a project of. Um... So imagine if I took this and integrated my simple multiplayer Steam template. So I have my menu front end so that it's easier for you to be able to find and, and join people's games. Um, put that in with this project right here. It's taking a little while to load because there's a lot of crap in here. Um, I can name one, one instance right now of a game that was considered to be a AAA title, I would assume, you know... Uh, a popular game that's on the market on Steam and everything else that you can play uh, that's based off of this right here. They took this shooter game t and they made a complete game out of it. Oh yeah, it's far more free stuff than building navigation. Dismiss the new plugins. Um, I don't know what engine version this is. Um, but, I mean, hell, look at this freaking map. Uh, the game Ark. They took this game template that's free, and they built a full title out of it. Now, you can't play out here. You're only playing on the inside of that level. But, dude, look at the window. Um, so if you're looking to make a fast-paced multiplayer game...
Arco's made from this. It's hard to kind of imagine with all the freaking dinosaurs and stuff that it was actually made from this, but... Can't jump over the rail, but... Seriously, I mean, that's pretty badass. You already have shooting, and... You have aim down sights. Crosshair, reloading, jumping... Um, no ammo. Uh, you got health pickups. Oh. Um, yeah. But it, I, I don't like the the way that you actually join and find games. It's hanging up on me here. But technically, you could package this as it is and and play this for your friends. Or play with yourself. I do that. I, I do that a lot. I play with myself. Um, yeah, that's unusual. It, that it's locked up like that. It doesn't ever do that to me. Probably because I got too much shit on this hard drive, and I need to archive more and get rid of some of these projects and so forth. We'll let it get caught up here. But you got a heads-up display. You got a health bar, kill feed. You got everything that you need. To really get in here and, and create a game. Um, and before you start saying, hey, convert this to City Studios. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it uses a, a dual character system. You use a first person, third person character system. And it's a good way to do it. I'm just waiting on. I don't know why it's locking up. I will blame you guys for it. Um, it's never done that before. But uh, whenever I'm looking at myself and I'm in this this play mode, thank you. Um, I'm seeing myself in first person mode. But if I see you on the map, I see you as a third person character. So you're using both a first person and third person character. And. And unless you got somebody that can rip the arms off of every one of the Sinti characters, um, it's kind of difficult to do. But if you get this, um, maps, high rise is the only map that it, it's in here, I think. But they're using um, level streaming. And they have audio in one layer, gameplay, lights. You know, it's hard to explain how well they did all this, but as you can see, there's a lot of freaking blueprints in here you can work with. Your weapons, um, and pickups, pawns, um, your bot and your player pawns. Um, there are things you can actually do. Plus, you got all the um, first-person animations are right here, and montages to go with them. Um, Third-person animations are right here. Uh, what was it? Um, what was the actual oh shooter entry? I think that's it. I hit play here. There we go. Um, host. Um, join. Online store leaderboards demos options. Um, Using keyboard and mouse to be able to navigate. Um, I think that if um, number of bots, I don't remember how to freaking. All right, hit enter. It's a free for all. Let's make it team deathmatch. Three bots, map, sanctuary, and high rise. Try Sanctuary. Land is on or off. Record demo is off. So all that's saved. And then... Okay, well how do you actually launch the damn game? Yeah, 
even if you don't know any code whatsoever, you can you can muster your way around. I've actually um, make your own game. Um, oh, hell, I, I don't remember. I'll have to play around with a little bit more, but um, you could actually run through the menu like this and set it up and be able to run through and play. Uh, probably just package it the way it is and, and run it. But I think if I actually put my menu system in here, it would be easier to follow. And of course, it would use Steam architecture and that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, the, um, the gameplay is actually fast paced. And it's, well, you don't combat, so. Two maps, what was the other one? Sanctuary. Oh, stop. Yeah, doing blueprints is actually doing coding, so. Yeah, I forgot there was two maps here. Um, yeah, you got like health kit, different pickups, stuff like this. Um, but like I said, since you're using a third person and first person character um, model at the same time, Another thing um, with this right here, have fun with it. You can create your own game based off of this right here. Um, as for doing the um, as your third person character, your first person character, um, yeah, variables, variables, variables. <laughs> you'll you'll never run into a shortage of variables. Player pawn. I'll quickly look at this, and I'm going to get out of here. Um, this is not the master. But you can see you've got death sounds are right there. Respawn particle effect. Uh, stuff is already set up in here. If you look at your viewport, as you can see, you've got... Um, this is your player character. And if... Come down here and uncheck visible. That's just your third person character right there. But you also have a first person character, which is just a set of freaking arms. And that just doesn't look right. Um, so I'm assuming probably you could go through and there's nothing in here. Nothing in the event graph whatsoever. Nothing in construct, uh, construction script. Just that. I didn't change anything you asked. Um, but changing your player mesh, that's where you would go to actually change your player mesh. Um, same thing for your bot. Um, open full blueprint editor. You got bot behavior. Uh, I, I am not a... I don't want to see your crotch there, bro. Uh, the player pawn and the, the bots are all going to be the same character. But I mean, you've got everything you need to get started with creating a game. I guess, technically, I could probably change this over to work with Cindy characters and change maps around and change weapons around, things like that. Um, change particle effects. Switch it over to my menu system. Um, and actually create a, a game quickly just by grabbing this right here and just doing a few, th few changes in here. Weapons, materials, textures. Um, you just got the rifle and the launcher. You got two weapons. Um, your blueprints folder, weapons. Um, open. So you got a master. So you got your trail and your muscle flash force feedback capability for your controllers. Um, 
Extractual weapon. So you got everything you need to get started with, and if you wanted to create a fast-paced shooter game, maybe change some rules for victory conditions or whatever else, but, you know, it's a good start. I mean, hell, if they could make the, the game arc based off of this, you know, big difference between arc and this, but, you know, they took this as a starting point, and they made the game arc. Well, freaking dinosaurs and building things and all kind of cool stuff. But, yeah, I mean, very worthwhile to take a look at. Absolutely love it. All right, let's wrap this up with, um, uh, I'm getting hungry, and I'm a fat kid. I like to eat. Um, this was a, a challenge for myself. I built a, a, something of a game within one hour's time. Uh, we stopped on the Bank Heist um, project um, because, you know, waiting on you guys. So for those who are not familiar with the simple multiplayer Steam template, what you get is my menu system. You don't get a full shooter or anything else. That's something totally different. Um, you get this menu. Well, it's an ugly-ass menu. But yes, but it has access Steam community while playing. It has your Steam username and avatar will be in the upper right-hand corner. And it has the ability for you to host your own game. And for people to find you, as long as they're using Steam in the background as well. And then being able to come in and shoot or do things. Of course, this is just a, a sample part of the, the bank heist. What in the first person? Do. This is a little bit different from the other bank heist project. Testing a bot to stand still so you can actually, uh, when he sees you, he turns and shoots at you. See my health bar is going down. But I don't know if you can tell, the the actual impact point was actually way up in the freaking sky. So I was having some other issues with this, this project. Um, but the simple multiplayer Steam template is a way that I generate a few bucks. Um, I use, yeah, I, I use the simple multiplayer Steam template on every freaking project that I do. Um, but it's just the menu system. It's not a, a full game by any means. Um, I just use it because it works. Um, or would actually go into it. Um, really and truly it's just the menu it's just so that you can put this as a starting point for your game and allow other people to join you so if I run standalone game it's going to work and show everything correctly um, I've also shown how to do custom splash screens as well um, but you get the menu you get your steam functionality you get your ability to find and host games and you know, it'll search for 10 seconds before it gives up, or you can just go to single player, um, and it goes into the lobby map. That's it. This is basically what you get. It's just this, without the little pain pad right there. This was just function testing for, for health and a death and respawn system. This was part of a um, shooter template that I was kind of toying around with. I don't have a particle effect in here yet, but... Reload. And I didn't do the put-away yet. Yeah. Um, the simplistic nature of the way this menu system works, if I actually just go into... And I hate actually just going into the project. Um... It uses um, Steam architecture to 
let you find and host games and people to find your games use that that backbone um, sneak peek for Friday um, I haven't even opened the project yet I don't think um, sneak peek if you want to work along I'm gonna try to do a longer stream on Friday um, specifically for I may do Saturday earlier in the day but kind of a sneak peek here actually go into doesn't matter what map we're going to there's a couple free assets that we're going to work with is going to be the animation starter pack military character silver military weapon silver um, if you go to marketplace the first one is going to be animation starter pack you search for that and it's going to be right here. Absolutely 100% free of charge. Um, your pistol, rifle, shotgun animations. Okay. You can also search for free. But if you do browse, look for animations. And then go from right here. Price low to high. Mocap basics free. Phoenix NM, this is free for the month, so definitely get this while it's still free. 100% get this one. Um, mobility Starter Mocap Pack, free. No, five bucks. So you got these two, which are free. You can never have too many freaking animations. Um, but let's go to um, Yeah, it, they're more or less easy to work with. I don't use their stuff. I use it uh, a little bit differently. I use the animations separately. I've already exported the animations, so I can just import them directly into the UE4 mannequin skeleton. It takes me less time to retarget them. But if you go to um, free, take the time, search through this damn thing, you're going to find a lot of free things in here. 18 freaking pages of free stuff to work with. Um, but the ones that we're going to work with are going to be uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, prototype character and prototype weapons not a bad one to look at either um, they're free uh, sci-fi weapons silver and dark are free those are not bad but the ones we're going to use are going to be for the, the Friday stream is going to be military characters silver and military weapons silver. Now it is going to say that um, if you mouse over it, it's only good till up to 4.21. Doesn't matter. I'm in a 4.23 project and they work. All you do is add a project and instead show all projects. Um, I'm not going to put it in here. Bank Heist. You know, it'll come up with Asset Not Compatible. Just select this right here. Pick 421 and add to project. And you can add it directly into your project. So what I'm going to be using is Silver and Silver Weapons. They are both free in the, um, the marketplace. So if you look for Browse, Military Character. Um, so we look at... Um, We'll just hit browse. I military character, silver and dark. You can get both, but I'm going to use silver and I'm going to use the the silver weapons. So you get those three assets: military character, silver, military weapon, silver, and animation starter pack. And that's what I'm going to use for doing a build on this. And I'm, I'm going to show you why. It comes with sounds, sound attenuations, grenade launcher, knife, pistol, rifle, rocket launcher, shotgun, sniper rifle. You've got all kind of stuff in here already for that. You've got particle effects uh, already in here. This is free. Here's your weapons, your static meshes, assault rifle. Um, Okay, it's a sci-fi looking assault rifle. Uh, grenade launcher, grenade launcher ammo, 
shotgun, rocket launcher, pistol, sniper rifle. So you've got weapons to work with. However, it gets better from there. Um, there's no blueprints, so it's not like it's a, they're, they're working directly as they are. But if you look at, let's see, animations. They already have trigger, slide, particle effect, sound. Everything is already set up in the freaking animation already. So when you select to fire a weapon, it's going to go ahead and, and cycle, do the animation, the particle effect, the sound, everything right there. Um, I don't know if I like all that, but um, showing pulling a magazine out of your, your rectum and shoving it into the weapon. So but you have reload animations for the weapon, um, pistol animations, sniper, um, reload sniper from hip and iron sights, reload pistol, so I mean it's got all that already in there, so you've got a lot of good stuff set up for making your weapons work right off the bat and then your characters yeah well yeah you know we sometimes have to pull things out of our ass you know, male and female characters they're not great with the animations they're in a t-pose so you know you got a female character and you have male character they're free, you know. Well, you know, rectal tasers, you know. That's another thing, too, you know. So really and truly, and the, the skeleton, if you look at, they're not, not retargeted. Um, more or less the same as the UE4 mannequin skeleton. So just, I'm not going to do any changes to it right now because I want to do this all on, on video, on stream. But, we're going to use my simple multiplayer Steam template for the menu system. Twenty bucks U.S. dollars. That's how I I'm able to to buy things. Um, so yeah, so we're using my simple multiplayer Steam template. <laughs> yeah, no, some people pay extra for that. They do. They pay extra to get tased. How was the radio show where somebody got tased in the nutsack? Yeah, yeah, we won't get into that. So, all right, so you guys get ready for Friday stream. Unless you guys want me to do it on Saturday, let me know on Discord. Um, you're going to need the, at minimum, animation starter pack, military character silver, military weapon silver. Um, bonus points if you you have or buy my simple multiplayer steam template for 20 bucks because I'm going to be using it and those three asset packs and can start making a a game it's either this or I can use the shooter uh, template either or um, both ways are the only thing that's not free is the simple multiplayer steam template but um, if you choose to go with the um, yes, these are weapon components somebody was asking about earlier, the shooter, I could either do the, the project I just showed or I can actually take it from, where the hell was it? Well, the, the shooter um, game project. What the hell is it called? This hell getting old. Um, shooter game, yeah. I can actually take that the free shooter game and use my simple multiplayer Steam template, combine the two of them together, and actually make a standalone playable game where can package it as a development um, packaging 
and be able to play it standalone and have fun. Um, do the conversion process of making that work on stream, or can do the um, the prototype shooter with the um, the the free assets and my multiplayer template. You got military weapons and silver and dark. You got the military character, silver and dark. They're all free. Um, I'm just going to use the silver and silver. Um, I thought about adding in the modular sci-fi starter kit, some of that for you know the, the characters in the background. Um, uh, it might be a paid project to do later, but it's a lot of work. Um, doing the destructive content, but keep on me about it. Um, if you want to buy an animation pack for just general use in the background of your game, the pedestrian animation pack, highly recommended. The Phoenix Anim pack, you saw me using the swim stuff earlier. Um, So let's just do a recap on what we did for the um, the stream tonight, and I can actually go eat. So this is our final recap. You know, get with me on Discord. Um, be in and out, back and forth. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of stuff in, do in, in doing that. One, but just keep up with me on my Discord channel. And remember, no mentions. I hate mentions, and I hate DMs, private messages. All right, so. What we did was we created a test map with stairs. Of course, I don't have the water visible in here. Yeah, I use Mixamo stuff for um, quite a bit. We set up our Cindy Studios characters. We set up um, some aggressive fish and a shark. We swim. We stop swimming. We tread water. And then when we come out of it, yeah, I hate DMs because I have to stop what I'm doing to manually switch over. I, I run three monitors, and I have my streaming software is up on the left monitor. What you're seeing on is going on to my center monitor. The right monitor just has Discord running by itself. So, um, y'all suck. So you almost don't even notice the pause there. I put that pause in specifically so that um, if not, you would just keep doing the swimming animation until you stop moving, and then it would go back to your regular animation, and it just didn't look right. So we have a one-tenth of a second. Get the hell out of my way, damn sharks. So the transition, it forces you into this transition. Eh, you suck. So that's what we did for... Now this video is we use the free asset um, for the animations. We use the Cindy Studios characters and the pirate pack. So we can add some sharks, some aggressive fish, and yeah, make it all work. And we can actually go into the actual map and Yay, you can swim. Can't jump while you're in the water. You have to wait till you get out of the water before you can start jumping again. Or the I love the, the skeleton, but he kind of really camouflaged on this map right here. I have set up this map to actually um, uh, do a shooter with. The trouble is, is I um, really kind of need to put some um, some fog in here. So you go and you start aiming like okay I can see you all the way across there and if you got somebody that actually has good eye eyesight unlike me yeah um, might be able to see all the way across the map and shoot somebody all across the map so there's ways of preventing that um, just like I was doing kind of screwing around with um, the submarine from the war pack it's absolutely crappy and cheesy um, yeah 
Well, that's the whole pirate pack. This is what I'm using there. The the skeleton, the the demo map, the fish, the shark. All came from there. Um, I need to see. I got a custom custom splash screen there for the editor, and I have a custom splash screen for actually playing the game as well. Um, I was changing some things around here on on this. This is something I just kind of play around with, just to kind of. Just to see, made some custom animations as well. Was bored. Go to a periscope view. I'm shooting torpedoes at the out of the boat, by the way. And so you can see it goes torpedo. It hits. Does the final killing blow. Ship rolls over, and then goes away. <laughs> I was bored, you know. I haven't really messed with it since. Just come in here and I'll turn off the um, the shooting timer so you can actually shoot faster. And just spam the torpedoes. But that was a custom animation to make it roll over, and then another custom animation to uh, to make it actually go under. I mean, just like we're doing with the bank heist, we created our own custom animation for the uh, the slide moving on the pistol, the shells coming out, the you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah, those were custom animations. But I want to change the animation to be instead of it just rolling over and then dropping down. Um, you can actually come in here and ask the player. Oh, those are my splash screens there. Um, I was also working on Sea Mine. That if your sub got too close to it, it would blow up. But um. Remember where I put the damn animations. The vehicle's rigged. Um, but essentially, the the quick way to do it for like weapons, if you don't have a um, an animation for your weapons for your slide cycling, it's not a big deal. Um, no, I'm not going to do the Luger. Um, a little too much involved in a toggle action pistol when it fires. Um, I love the P08 Luger, don't get me wrong. And a P38, Walther. But, like the, um, the 1911. And this is the one, you know, it's easy to work with. All you gotta do is you go into the uh, the skeletal mesh, you create asset, create animation, current pose, and I'm just gonna put this in the root asset folder here, and I'm just gonna call this 1911 underscore fire. Close that, and see there's zero animations there's no no frames whatsoever but all you gotta do is just take it and pause make sure you're all the way back at the end here and all I'm gonna do is just right click insert frame after zero and do it again insert frame after one for two and all I'm gonna do is put six frames in here total so we'll do that until it says insert frame after five and then I'm going to do is hit um, apply. Then I'm going to slide key apply. Go to this right here, and I'm going to advance the timer up to three seconds. Mm, yeah, halfway through. 
percentage. Make sure you're right at the 50%. You can probably get it more perfect than this. I'm not worried about it all that much. But you just want to get it right there in the center. And I'm going to take the slide and I'm going to move it back. And then I'm going to hit key and apply. Then I'm going to drag it all the way to the end. And then I'm going to move the slide back to the close position. Hit key and apply. And there, we got a shooting animation or firing animation. It looks kind of herky jerky because it's start and finish, start and finish. But um, yeah, you can actually use that now. It took, what, about a minute to make a, an animation for um, shooting? You can hit save. So when you set up your shooting animation, you know, you just go from there. Um, the y'all are making me stay for too long. This is actually the project from the Bank Heist project videos. Getting mixed results on um. One player, regular viewport. Um, draw your pistol out. There's that custom animation. Shell casing dropped on the floor. Slide cycling, muzzle flash. It sounds. Reload. You see the magazine at the ground. Do the animation. And our pistol has a flashlight on it, so we turn on the flashlight. Yeah, I'm, I'm not much of an animator, so that that's the extent of my animations. All right, guys and gals, I'm done, Dunsky. I'm going to go check on Ma. I'm going to start present and making some... And I'm going to recommend a YouTube channel for cooking. It's um, Food Wishes on YouTube. Uh, Chef John, funny as hell to watch. Uh going to be doing tomorrow a his firehouse chili casserole thing oh yeah um and i show how to fix that go back and review the um the bank heist uh, videos they're shorter videos but i show how to fix some of the um the issues with the particle effects um thank um Cedraco for helping me with that one because i scratched my head for a while on that one but um, yeah, on the particle effects, the explosion and the gunshot looped over and over and over, and it never stopped. You click on required, scroll down, change the uh, emitter loops to one, hit save. Click on required, change the emitter loops to one, hit save, and it fixes it. But yeah, y'all check those videos out and let me know which way you want me to go for this weekend's video. Uh, whether or not I'm going to do the um, shooter game or if I'm going to use the um, those other uh, free assets. Either one, I'm going to be using my Simple Multiplayer Steam template. The money that I make from doing the Simple Multiplayer Steam template goes towards letting me buy other games and other things and sometimes helps with like my medication and... Um, you know, like getting me a new walker and my Geritol and shit like that. So, um, <laughs> <coughs> I charge 20 US dollars for the simple multiplayer team template as a way to generate money so that I can buy these different assets and check things out. Um, but I'm going to do this and I'm going to go start prepping tomorrow's meal. We're doing said, the um, firehouse chili cornbread casserole thing. Um, basically it's um, a thick chili that is later in a casserole pan that's covered over with um, cornbread. So I'm probably going to make some Mexican style cornbread to go on top of um, my 
spicy chili. Not super spicy, but just enough to let you know it's there. Um, but I will be in and out of the, um, the office. Like I said, I keep Discord running at all times. I always keep it on the general UE4 channel. So if you have questions, let me know. Just ask them right there. Don't send direct messages. I don't like them. They, they, they require me to do more effort. I get the questions as soon as I can. Um, but y'all let me know what you want to see for this weekend's video. Whether I use the um, the free character and weapons pack, which is pretty cool. Or if I use shooter game and start converting that over maybe to Cinti assets as well. Um, or do a, a hybrid of both. Yeah, um, add the characters in. Taking out the first person character um, arms and stuff like that. and I don't know. We'll see. I, I think probably the easiest thing to do is just... Um, to start with those three assets that I showed in that one, the um, animation starter pack, the military weapons, silver, and the silver characters. But y'all let me know on Discord, and I want to thank everybody for stopping in and watching, and we will see you guys soon. Love y'all, and not just when it's cold.